The city sprawls beneath the weight of secrets, its alleys whispering tales of intrigue and shadows. This is Paul Madvig, and what follows are the ink-stained pages of a noir odyssey, a narrative etched in the dark recesses of betrayal and suspense. March 15th. The night started like any other. The city's heartbeat synchronized with the rhythm of clandestine deals. My right-hand man, Ned Beaumont, strolled into my smoke-filled office, a confidant with penchant for trouble. Paul, he muttered, his eyes reflecting the city's shadows. We got trouble brewing. Found Senator Henry's son dead on the streets. Trouble indeed, I leaned back, cigarette smoke whirling around me like a shroud. Ned, we need to steer this ship away from the rocks, thwart the DA's investigation. We play our cards right, and I get the Senator's favor, maybe even his daughter. March 20th. Ned, the relentless seeker, delve into the underworld's underbelly, uncovering the murkiness beneath the surface. Mysterious letters hinted at my involvement in the murder, a setup orchestrated by unforeseen hands. Paul, Ned's voice echoed in the dimly lit alley. The city's a powder keg. We're standing on the fuse, your daughter's in the mix too. I could feel the ground shifting beneath me as the Alliance crumbled. Refusing to release a follower's brother from jail ignited a war with Shadow Rory, a mob boss with a taste for power. March 25th. Ned's pursuit led him to New York's gritty streets, chasing shadows that threatened to consume him. The web tightened, leaving him beaten and battered. Shadow Rory's puppet, Jeff Gardner, ensured silence from the crucial witness. In a dingy room, Ned faced the brutality of captivity. His escape marked the turning point, a rebellion against the unforeseen forces manipulating our fates. April 1st. Confrontations ensured. O'Rory, the publisher, and Opal, my daughter. The city's underbelly quivered with tension. Ned, relentless in his pursuit, uncovered Janet's involvement in the mysterious letters. Paul, who were at an impasse, the victim's hat, details, they don't add up. Ned's words hung in the smoke-filled room. An impasse indeed. Bonds strained, friendships tested. Janet and Ned, an unlikely duo, joined forces to untangle the threads of murder or mystery. April 5th. Evidence surfaced, exposing Senator Henry as the true murderer. Justice, a fleeting shadow, apprehended the corrupt senator in a darkened room. I confessed to the crime, but the echoes of betrayal lingered. The city's different beast now, Paul. Ned's gaze pierced through the shadows. We may not be enemies, but things have changed. The city... A tapestry of noir witnessed the unraveling of a tale woven in the threads of suspense and betrayal. As I close this journal, the echoes of once unbreakable alliance would linger, a mere whisper in the winds of a city that never sleeps. The rain cascaded down in the relentless sheets, a symphony of whispers on the rain-soaked streets of Los Angeles. Ned Beaumont moved through the shadows like a specter a lone figure navigating the labyrinth of the city's deceit. It was 1942, a time when the world gripped by war, yet in the heart of Los Angeles, a different kind of battle raged, one fueled by corruption, power, and the enigmatic lure of a glass key. In the dim glow of a neon lights, Ned's footsteps echoed off the damp pavement, a rhythmic cadence that mirrored the pulse of a city that had seen too much and forgotten too little. His trench coat clung to him like a second skin, the raindrops running down its length like the tears of a city haunted by its own past. It was in this atmospheric setting that Ned found himself thrust into a dark tale that resonated with an eerie mastery. It was a glass key, a seemingly innocuous artifact, held the key to a Pandora's box of secrets that Ned could scarcely fathom. It touched and infused the air like a sense of foreboding as if it were the very fabric of reality was fraying at the edges. Ned's intentional monologue, a torrent of thoughts and regrets, echoed in the recesses of his mind like the distant howls of unseen creatures. As the glass key changed hands, 
had unlocked doors to hidden chambers where the powerful figures plotted in the shadows. Each revelation pulled Ned deeper into a conspiracy that seemed to weave through the city's dark underbelly. Like a malevolent serpent, the glass key became a symbol, a dark talisman, that whispered promises of salvation and damnation in equal measure. In the true spirit of a gritty narrative, Ned's journey took him to a smoky jazz club, opulent mansions and seedy back alleys, each location dropping and dripping with an air of decadence and decay. The city itself became a character, a brooding force that tested Ned's resilience and sanity at every turn. Every corner held a lurking horror, every character a potential adversary with hidden motives. The supernatural began to seep into the narrative, blurring the lines between reality and a nightmare. Shadows danced with an outwardly life of their own, and the glass key, now changed with a malevolent sentence, became conduit for forces that had transcended in the natural order. Ned's perception of reality became a fragile construct as nightmares bled into the waking world haunted by memories of a love lost and the echoes of a violent past, Ned's psychological landscapes became the battleground. The key, once a mere trinket, now reflected the fractured nature of his soul. It delved into the depths of Ned's psyche, unraveling layers of trauma that shaped him into a man on the edge. The climax approached like a storm on the horizon. Ned faced a a choice to succumb to the darkness that enveloped him or to confront the demons that lurked within in a confrontation that echoed the intensity. A bullet-riddled showdown, Ned faced the puppet masters pulling the strings of the city's malevolent dance. The key, once a symbol of power, shattered into a million shards, each carrying a fragment of the city's secrets in the aftermath. As rain continued to fall, washing away the sins of the past, Ned stood alone amidst the wreckage, the city wounded but alive, breathed a sigh of relief. As the dawn broke on a new day, Ned walked away from the wreckage, his footsteps leaving imprints on wet pavement. The key's curse lifted, but the scars on Ned's soul remained. In the true spirit, the story concluded, not with a neat resolution, but with a lingering sense that some nightmare never truly faded away. And so, Ned Beaumont, a survivor of the city's twisted dance, faded into the misty morning carrying the weight of the key's legacy. The echoes of his footsteps lingered in the alleyways, a haunting melody that whispered of a city forever entangled in its shadows. The rain continued to fall, washing away the sins of the night, but the echoes of Ned's journey lingered in the air like a ghostly refrain.